Hadil Marai, welcome. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for taking the time. Thank you for having me. How do you, uh, so you're a content creator, entertainer, uh, how do you introduce yourself to people? How do, what do you say that you are? I guess I'm just a person who likes doing videos. That's how I introduce myself. I yeah. like doing comedy videos. I love content creation in general. It's a sort of way to express myself. How did you get into it? I got into it uh, through my friend Maha. Yeah. Maha AJ, follow her. Uh, <laughs> shout out Maha. Uh, so she started and then she tried to convince me a lot because I always loved YouTube and I always loved content creation. It felt like it was my calling. Yeah. Um, but she pushed me into it. Pushed. <laughs> she pushed me into it because I lacked that like motivation to do it. Not motivation, like confidence essentially. Yeah. But once I got into it, I really felt like it's my comfort zone. I felt like I'm in my element. So your friend kind of thought that you, you're, you were an entertainer. You make her laugh and you thought that she thought that you would be good as a uh, making videos for the public. Yeah, plus she started herself with content creation as well and she's still going and uh, we would brainstorm with each other. I'd help her with the sketches. So yeah. Okay, and that's a good point. So you do sketches, you plan out your, your videos. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes they're improv. Sometimes I just have the main pointers. Like I'm just gonna do types of, of for example, times types of mothers. So you have the okay. sensitive mother. You have the, the the tough mother, like tough love, the cool mom. Yeah. So yes, yeah, so like I have just the main pointers sorted, yeah. and then I just kind of improv okay. whatever happens. And w so when did you start? When did you start on YouTube, and how did you grow from there? Uh, I started actually on Instagram Okay. and then a month in I was doing daily vlogs like one minute vlogs and then I started my YouTube channel that was about three years uh, three years ago okay yeah yeah and did you do so is YouTube now your biggest and did you go on to TikTok and everything else oh uh, yeah I went to TikTok straight TikTok straight forward after it started yeah like I jumped on that wagon I was like I'm gonna go even though people you spotted were like, it early yeah yeah people were like oh TikTok like mm, this is like for whatever kids and I was like, guys, you're doing what people in the traditional media are doing mm. about social media because people who are in the traditional media are still a bit, um, they look at social media as something that is inferior. Yeah. Um, and I was like, guys, you're doing the same thing that, like, you're doing the same thing with TikTok. Are people, you're making as, the same as, mistake. Exactly, yeah. as people who are in traditional media who are doing that. And now I think TikTok is setting a great example and a great model, not just um, uh, content wise but as well as as business wise a lot of other platforms are following it and yeah. you have the reels you have the YouTube shorts yeah, so, yeah. so many mm. and what about snapchat I know you do that as well yeah I love snapchat it's just it feels very personal yeah Fast. Other, <laughs> other than the others like people love it love the long boring details that you would think are like to you are boring but people love it it's like a reality show yeah literally and then i have my new show on snapchat it's called i don't know how to translate that <laughs> laugh and have fun okay good, good <laughs> and enough. it's essentially um comedy skits as well ah, so yeah nice and uh how do you do all the different platforms do you have a team do you spend do you do this full time like how do you manage everything i have a solid friend group yeah and we help each other out we got each other's back we just we really care for each other yeah. and that's what keeps us going like if one of my friends are, one of my friends are like Hadil I don't have an idea or something we'll be like okay let's sit yeah. let's brainstorm same with me guys I'm feeling down I don't know da, da, da. let's sit let's brainstorm what do you need da, da, da. let's do this let's do that and so then you kind of encourage each other as exactly. well exactly yeah. you have that support system of people who genuine, genuinely care and they genuinely look after you and it's not about numbers Yeah. it's not about trying to to, to outshine each other because at the end of the day I myself want to follow more than one person because yeah. you want to yeah. you want to be entertained you it's, know what yeah. I mean it's not beating mm. other people to get the most views than them it's more like it's a support network so yeah, yeah. and people love love it when they see genuine friendship and stuff they love seeing a group of people yeah. come together so that's why in, friends was a big hit yeah yeah I guess the show yeah but yeah. The, so they're in your videos your friends are in your videos as well their Always. sketches yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and what's what's the who are your audience? Uh, are they are they Emirati? Are they rest of the region? And what's your kind of most biggest 
hate content. Dude, you have a mix of everything. Yeah. Like I was, I was in Amsterdam. And I'm like, <laughs> no one knows me probably. <laughs> and then I got stopped there and I was like, wow. what? But uh, That's amazing. yeah, so you have from all over the place. You have from Saudi, huge audience, yeah, huge market, yeah. huge like like, and they are big on the internet, you know. Yeah. Uh, Egypt, Lebanon, Jordan. You have a lot of country. UAE. Yeah. A lot. Yeah, amazing. And your the type of content, like, how do you, if you, if you had to do one piece of content that you know that they like the most? Or does it depend? Do you have any sort of genres or themes that you kind of keep coming back to? I think relatability is key. Yeah. Whatever is relatable in your daily life yeah. and you just feel like you identify with, yeah. that's my go-to. Plus trends as well, like you ask. So, yani, uh, let's speak honestly, I'm not, uh, I'm not Dan Harmon. I'm not like this writer who's brilliant and comes up with ideas all the time. Sometimes I'm stuck. Yeah. So sometimes I see trends on TikTok and then I, I go like okay how can I make this a bit more different so I'm not copying exactly the same thing yeah you know it's like when you copy a homework but then like you change it a bit so like the yeah. teacher doesn't catch you yeah. so yeah sometimes I have to go to that yeah so, but yeah. you get inspiration from it but you're delivering it yourself so in the exactly. end of the day it's your yeah. take yeah, on yeah, it yeah yeah a hundred percent yeah amazing and so what are you doing this full time or what were you studying and is this the kind of career that you wanted to have? I'm a retired dentist. <laughs> <laughs> so I studied dentistry, graduated, high GPA and then I worked for a couple of years and then... People um, are retiring very young these days, aren't they? <laughs> uh, thing is, um, I, I was like, I'm going to do them in parallel, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't want to disappoint my parents. <laughs> and then my parents were like, oh, that's just the phase, she's going to get over that. Yeah. But then. After that, COVID happened and they were letting go of so many people and I was one of their most recent joiners to the clinic and they let me go uh, for understandable reasons, of course. And I was like, oh, that kind of happened on its own. Yeah. So I'm just like, <laughs> going to continue here. So yeah. You didn't have to quit. Plus, it's you didn't have I'm, to explain yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, dad, mom, I didn't do it. Like, it just <laughs> happened. So yeah, uh, and I love doing this because I love acting. I really want to go into acting um, yeah. uh, and I'm working hard on it. Um, I really, I love writing shows. I love watching brilliant shows. Well produced yeah. programs. Like yeah, like Mr. Robot, brilliant. Brit Sam Ismail is just brilliant in his yeah. writing, how that show was done. Yeah. I'm just watching it on repeat. Amazing. So yeah, so that's kind of like, how do you plan what to do? Because people talk about, we're at a, a content creator conference and people will talk about the industry and there's so many different uh, question marks. Uh, you know, in a healthy way, it's like, how do I make this as a business? There's so many people who don't make it. How do you view it as a business? Do you go, hey, I'm gonna do brand endorsements. I'm going to uh, be, uh, a diff uh, be paid for a talent for different things or revenue share on platforms? Or do you kind of let things happen naturally? So um, at the beginning, things were going very random for me. Uh, like I was, because I was sustained by my parents, like every Middle Eastern girl. And then I was sustained by like a couple of gigs that I would do here and there. I did a part-time job in marketing. I did a part-time job as a social media. I did uh, te tele, te what are they called? The telemarketers, yeah. I did that as well. Close so yeah. I would do, yeah, I would do like different gigs. So that sustained me financially. And in that meanwhile, I was just doing content because I love doing content because you need to grow for brands to look at you. Yeah. Then they look at you, then they reach out. So you need that audience. Exactly, so collaborations help. Having a set of, of identity that is to you, that makes you different, mm. that helps. Yeah. With me, I think it's, it's focusing on body inclusivity. It's being authentic. It's yeah. talking about mental health. It's my curly hair. Nice, yeah. Those things. It's that I'm imperfect. Yeah. So that's, that's my thing. Relatable. Mm. And do you think, so is it really designed to partner with brands or do you look at YouTube and Snapchat from revenue share or do you, do you want to launch a product or do you want to kind of, you know, you, know, you mentioned acting, like would you, if you had to do a, a series, say for Ramadan or something, would you stop your content for three months and, and do a show? So, 
The highest revenue is from uh, campaigns and partnerships with brands. Yeah. Um, because the share revenue in this region is not like, for example, the West. It's not like the States or, or Canada. It's a bit higher there. In terms of uh, YouTube and other platforms yeah, that yeah, do yeah. have share. Uh, and I'm doing, uh, there are other things as well that you can do to grow and also to express yourself. So I'm doing a podcast as well. I did nice. season one. That was fully on my own. I just did it because I wanted it. I wanted to do it so much. Amazing. It's a, a dark comedy like it podcast. Called? It's called Hassel Khair. Yeah. Um, and you can Are find you it okay? everywhere. No. It's Hassel uh, Khair. It means um, oh, like it's good that that happened. Okay, okay. Like oh, even if it's something bad, you're like it's fine. Like yeah, there is a plan behind this. There okay, is a meaning nice. behind yeah. it. You know. So that's the podcast and it's a dark comedy about how ironic life is and how at your lowest moments when you choose to laugh, things pass, Yeah. you know, and or how at your weakest points turned you into a stronger person. Okay. And that's what the podcast is about. about. So I'm doing season two now. Do you interview people and to tell their stories? Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I interview people and we talk about like in the lightest way possible about the darkest thing, which is very contradicting, mm. but it's like everyone after the end of the recording they would tell me I felt so free I would tell them what's your feedback they tell me I, I felt so free I feel lighter it comes out in Storytel yeah. uh, which is uh, a platform for streaming audiobooks and podcasts yeah. yeah they bought Kitab Saudi didn't they Storyful I don't know so. anyway <laughs> but you, you, yeah so what are, what are the trends that you're kind of going to be focusing on you know you did a podcast you're doing Snapchat is it more of the same? Is it everything for 2022? What are your content resolutions for next year? I want to go more into, I, I want to develop the podcast and that's happening. It's in the works. I want to do more sketches. I want to be involved in, in with the streaming services, like with Netflix, Shahid, OSN. These are, I think these streaming services are really changing the traditional TV industry because the traditional TV industry uh, is gangs, mm -hmm. literally. Like you have gangs of writers, gangs of directors who work with certain actors. That's why it's very rare to see new faces. Mm -hmm. But then streamers are coming in and they're like, nope, we want a solid story with new faces. Mm -hmm. And it really like especially in the, in the in the region. Arab region. Yeah, yeah. Al Rawabi School for Girls, great example. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good Jordan. Yeah, it's such a fresh piece because you know I watch these shows, the Arabic mm. ones, because they subtitle them now, and mm. it, you know people are used to it here, but you see the same actors in every show. Yeah. Kind of yeah, like 100%. Uh, okay. Hundred <laughs> you know? percent. They're yeah. literally like gangs, like where this people, we're going to move together, do a new piece, move yeah. together, do a new piece. Do a new piece, And yeah. the streamers are changing that, which yeah. gives me hope. Very good. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, you know, you will do that, you will hope to be in part of those shows, or you will continue to make your own social content as well? All together. All together. All together. Do you, have a, do you, have a, you mentioned the team and friends, but do you work with a talent management company or something like that? Yes. I worked with a couple of management companies until I felt comfortable with the one I am in right now because um, they're the first agency that I told them what my goals are and they yeah. were like, okay, yeah, this is how we make it happen. Step one, step two, step three. Okay. The others would be like, oh yeah, sure, we'll make this happen. And then they just disappear. And what, how do you how, who are they and how does that work? Do they, how do they understand you and how do they deliver? Do they assign you a manager and do you plan things out together? They're a sand circus yeah. and I think the, the, the key success to ah, them... They're, for, they're in Jeddah, they're yeah. quite new. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. They look cool online, yeah, 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 yeah. The success to them is communication. Yeah. Very clear, very logic oriented. They understand as well your emotions, they take that into concern. And then when you tell them, guys these are my goals for this quarter mm. one two three they're like okay this is how we can make this happen you have options here mm. and this is how we like they dissect everything and they actually care to answer you genuinely instead of just delivering fake promises mm. so yeah yeah very good cool well thanks for your time coming thank in today thank you so and much yeah, look forward to following your stories thank you hopefully so much. some of your shows will be subtitled <laughs> thank you follow me please <laughs> <laughs> amazing <laughs>